This conference will now be recorded. I've just started the recording. So in today's session, uh, what we will be learning is uh, the different types of uh, performance testing because it's just the day one, right? So I thought it, it would be a uh, good uh, concept to begin with because uh, yesterday, we learned about uh, what is performance testing. Uh, to keep it in simple words, uh, we, were, we, we just learned that uh, performance testing is all about checking the uh, behavior or performance of the application uh, under some load, under some expected load or by applying some load, right? So, uh, and, and what else we have covered? So what is that we generally uh, check uh, the, the very first thing in the performance testing, uh, how the application is responding, how the uh, pages are loading, okay? How the application is responding, how the pages are loading. When you click on one button, how, the, uh, how fast the application is navigating from one page to another page, like that. So generally, as per the industry standard, if you click, if you click a link or if you click a button, Ideally, the page should load in two to three seconds. In some projects, it can be actually it is two seconds only, but in some projects, it can be three or three seconds or five seconds, so depending on the uh, complex project architecture. Uh, <clears throat> okay, but anything beyond that, like ten seconds, fifteen seconds, and all, uh, is considered is considered to be a performance issue only. So, which you need to address when you when you when I say which you need to address. You need to work with the developer to get it fixed, to get it resolved. Okay, so now in today's session, we will be discussing about types of performance testing. See, I do have slides for this. It's not like I do have, I don't have slides and all. I do have uh, uh, slides for all of these uh, different types of tests that we learn, do or learn. But uh, I prefer to uh, go with uh, Notepad for today. Uh, just because uh, when I type it right, it will be easy for uh, most of you to, rem to remember. Okay, uh, I'll share the slides though. Okay, uh, probably uh, for all the registered students, you'll get all the documentation and everything, right? As part of that, you might receive all the slides. Okay, all the do documents. So, in the types of performance testing, uh, so we have these these important uh, you know different types that is the first one is the load test okay second one is uh, stress testing okay third is endurance testing okay fourth one is scalability testing Okay, fifth one is volume testing. Sixth one is failover testing. Uh, there is some other uh, thing called smoke test also. Generally, uh, we, we will discuss about this, uh, you know, as and when required, uh, not that important as of now. So types of performance testing, we have load test, stress testing, endurance testing, scalability testing, volume testing, and failover testing. So in today's session, we will discuss about the first five types of tests. And tomorrow's session, uh, may, uh, um, uh, that means in the next session, we will be discussing about this failover testing also, because there is a dependency on some of the terms that we haven't discussed yet. Like what is the server? What is the application server? What is a web server, right? Uh, what is a database server? So there is some dependency of some of the terms like that to explain, to explain about failover testing. That's the reason we will discuss that uh, tomorrow. And then tomorrow in sense, next session. Okay, so for all these types of testing, whatever it is, so to begin with, if you want to work, uh, or if you want to, uh, you know, do some type of testing, you will get some requirement, right? The requirement will be in terms of in uh, will be something like this. 
let's say you are working on a bank application. I'm just telling about the requirements, how you might get. But then once you once we understand that, we will go ahead and discuss about different types of performance tests. So let's say there is a bank application. In the bank application, what are the critical business scenarios uh, you think? What are the critical business scenarios you think? So one of the critical business scenario is transfer money, right? So generally, performance testers, they pick up the critical business scenarios first and test the performance of those scenarios. So one such critical scenario for any bank application is transfer money, isn't it? So uh, what are the uh, different steps that are involved in uh, transfer money? So what, what will you do exactly to test transfer money? What are the what is the process that you follow? Okay. So first thing is you launch bank application, isn't it? You launch the bank application. That's, that's the first step you do. Second step is log into the bank application, right? Third step is uh, select a beneficiary. Select a beneficiary. Fourth step, enter amount, okay, to be sent, right? Fifth step will be, fifth step will be uh, click transfer. Maybe you have some button uh, called maybe transfer amount. Once you click it, the amount will be transferred. So the sixth step will be log out. So these are the possible, six possible steps for this critical business scenario. So this is the workflow or scenario name. So this we call it as workflow or scenario name workflow or scenario name in this particular workflow or workflow or scenario name scenario we have these six possible steps right now the requirement can be something like they will come to us and say hey we have a bank application uh, where we have one critical scenario like transfer money okay so can you test this particular scenario? Okay, can you test this particular scenario with 50 users? 50 users, okay, 50 users and 500 iterations. 500 iterations. The requirement can be something like, something like this for you. What do you mean by that? <clears throat> what do you mean by that? That means they are asking us to do a performance test for this particular transfer money scenario with 50 users, with 50 users, okay? And then how many iterations? 500 iterations. 500 iterations means when you execute all these steps once, that will become one iteration. That will become one iteration. When you execute all these steps twice, that will become two iterations. When you execute all these steps thrice, that will become three iterations. Likewise, if you execute these steps for 500 times, this that will become 500 iterations. So why I'm telling you these terms? Very important term. Iteration is a very, very important term. Not only here in any other performance tool also, this term iteration is very, very important. So you have a sequence of steps to be executed for one scenario or workflow. When you execute it once, it will be one iteration. When you execute it twice, it will be two iterations. When you execute it thrice, it will be three iterations. So if you execute all these steps three times, that will be three iterations. So what client is saying that, hey, you, I want you to test this particular workflow. Okay, do a load test for this uh, with 50 users. That means 50 users together, they have to uh, uh, achieve these 500 iterations. Okay, this 500 iterations. So you you now you now hope you understood what is an iteration. Okay, what is a user? We know what is a user. We know it's it's a virtual user who does the same thing, right? Now we will start understanding the first type of uh, performance testing that is a load test. Basically, the meaning of the load test is all about checking the Checking the speed of the application, checking the speed of the application, okay, by applying, or you can say, under uh, expected load. 
So what do you mean by expected load? See, you know the meaning of checking the speed of the application. Of course, it's a, it's a pretty straightforward statement. Checking the speed of the application. Yes, right? So what do you mean by this under expected load? Expected load means whatever the client is giving you the target, right? This is the expected load. This is the expected load. Now you now let's say if you want to do do a load test for this bank application. So for this particular transfer money scenario, the load test you have to do is for 50 users, and those 50 users should run for 500 iteration. Okay. So generally, generally load test will always run for one hour. So when you are running a load test, right, you should run for one hour. That means you start a load test, okay, and you run for one hour, and then you end the load test. Load test will always run for one hour. So in one hour, in one hour, okay, so what you need to do is you need to start a load test with 50 users, okay, who, who will run for 500 iterations together. Okay, that means 50 users will run for final iterations in one hour. And then uh, with this load, when you run for one hour, after completion of the load test, if you go back and check the results, you have to analyze what is the speed of the application, how the, how the transactions, how these steps are, uh, you know, responding. Like how much time it has taken for launch, how much time it has taken for login, how much time it has taken to select a beneficiary, how much time uh, it has to, uh, you know, it will it, ha it has taken to enter the amount, how much time it has taken to transfer amount, and what is the time for logout. You got it, right? So when, when I say load test, in the load test, you are testing the speed of the application, okay, under some load. This is the load. Who has given this load, load details to you? Client has given these details to you. Client or uh, the application team or the business analyst they have given these details to you okay so you need to run a load test with 50 users and in and when you run it for one hour they should achieve 500 iterations they should achieve 500 iterations okay now from where the client is getting that this 50 users data and 500 iterations we will discuss in the next session okay uh, next instance upcoming session where we have to discuss about non-functional requirements gathering, right? I'll tell you at that point, like uh, how the client will give you these numbers. Okay, so, but for now, let's understand that client is giving you these numbers. Okay, so according to that only, you have to do a load test. Simply, we cannot uh, do a load test on our own with some random numbers. No, it's, it's not like that. Generally, what happens? Client will give you the number of users and those number of users should run for these number of these many iterations in one hour. Okay. And then, and then after that, after running the test for one hour with 50 users, if you go back and check the uh, performance of these transactions, you should be able to analyze whether the performance, uh, you know, uh, the response times, right? What we were discussing, whether uh, those are within two seconds or greater than three seconds or you know any any transaction getting uh, you know high response times for example let's say launch we got some some response like 1.5 second login let's say something like 2.0 second select a beneficiary let's say 1.3 second enter the amount to be sent let's say 0 0.6 second transfer amount let's say 8.8 .8 second log out let's say 1.5 second so here this is the culprit so click transfer amount that means when you click on transfer amount, you are getting a response time of 8.8 .8 second, which is very high. So that is the culprit. That particular transaction, uh, you know, uh, has some issue, performance issue, uh, which you need to work with developer and get it fixed. Okay. So load test is all about checking the speed of the application under some load. Load means this users. Who will give? The client will give. For how many hours we have to run a load test for one hour only for one hour only what exactly we will analyze in the load test we will analyze the response times we will analyze the response times like how fast the application uh, is responding okay how fast the application is responding 
So uh, this is the basic definition of a load test, you know, in a simple way. So let me take uh, some question, chat. Let me see the chat window. Okay, Shaker uh, has some <laughs> question. It says, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Good morning, everyone. Uh, question load test. Usually it's like for one hour. What if the first users finish the 500 before one hour? Or let's say they took more than an hour. Will that test stop or continue? How is the scenario goes? No, uh, our execution uh, approach or execution uh, configuration should be in such a way that it will run for only one hour. It cannot uh, it cannot run for more than one hour. If it is running for more than one hour, it will it can become a different type of test again. Okay, and it cannot run for less than one hour also. Uh, basically, any load test will run for one hour. If you're running it for 20 minutes or 30 minutes, then uh, we cannot say it as a load test. Okay. Uh, so why we have to run for one hour? That also we will discuss about discuss in the upcoming session. Uh, like when we gather non-functional requirements. Right? Generally, what happens is, let's say why we have to run for one hour. I'll tell you in one liner. Uh, see. The client, what they do is they will try to analyze. Uh, let's say if the already if the application is already there, okay. So they will see uh, at, a, at a high level they will see maybe in the last two three months or six months uh, during which month, uh, which day, at what point of time or during which period of time, like uh, there were more number of people access the application. So that max number they will take and give it to us uh, as a uh input as a users okay so and then we have to go for the load test so load test uh you have to schedule it for one hour so you, you when you schedule it for one hour right uh, you you can you know you cannot end it before that unless and until there is uh some test data major test data issues uh even if you run uh, it doesn't uh impact or it doesn't have any uh, uh you know uh importance then only you have to stop it and beyond one hour, you cannot uh, you you cannot run it for two hours or three hours. If you are running for two hours or three hours, it will be a different type of test. That's it. You can run it, but it will be a different type of test. Okay. So who is giving this data? Client. How many for how many hours we have to run the load test? One hour. What is that we have to analyze? We have to analyze the primary thing. The primary criteria for uh, for analyzing is the response times. That means how fast uh, this transactions are getting executed okay with the amount of load we have uh, given as input this is about the load test now if you see this uh, and one more thing uh, to what shaker has asked these 50 users right uh, they should evenly pace the execution for example like if these 50 users run for first 10 minutes or 20 minutes and if they stop uh, that is not called as performance testing. In in the in that one hour of duration, they should evenly pace the execution. So they should, <clears throat> we should we should try uh, to apply the load in that one hour. That means those 50. We should try and see that those 50 users run, uh, you know, at an even pace uh, during that one hour of load test. So how do you achieve that? So if you want to if you want to evenly pace the execution with those 50 users for one hour, then you have to configure the workload modeling correctly. There is some concept called workload, workload modeling, which we will discuss probably on Tuesday or Wednesday for a couple of days. So with that concept, uh, you know, the exact uh, configuration, uh, execution approach, everything will be decided. Like in, the, in this one hour, uh, when these 50 users will get executed, Okay, how uh, uh, you know how the execution is evenly paced such that after one hour of test, if you go back and check the results, you should achieve these 500 iterations. Okay, if client is asking you to uh, achieve 500 iterations in one hour, you cannot achieve 800 or 1000, or you cannot achieve 200 or 300. So you have to uh, be accurate and close to this number. For that, you need to implement a concept called workload modeling. Which we will discuss for a couple of days, probably on probably on Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay, so we'll see that. So basically, for today, uh, it's all about a load test where we check the speed of the application. 
by applying some load that is the expected load so load means uh load load you know i can say load means let's say number of users okay so this this is the load okay and this is what you have to achieve this is the load okay done done now the next type of testing is called stress testing okay stress testing so uh, one one more important point so whoever is working on the performance testing project right uh, basically uh, the major test the first major test what they do is load test only so before performing this load test probably they won't perform the remaining tests okay they won't perform the they won't they won't perform the remaining tests so this will be your base the first major test that you have to perform if this test went well if this test goes well for you then only you have to go for the remaining test if this test itself is a failure then uh, you have to get it fixed okay uh, with the developer before you start working on different types of tests again okay so let's discuss about stress testing also so stress testing generally it means that whatever the uh, amount of load okay you uh, whatever the amount of load you applied for the load test right here so beyond that beyond that whatever the amount of load you apply that will become a stress test okay that means testing the application with more number of users than the load test okay so i can simply say to keep it in simple words testing the application with more number of users okay with more number of users than load test for example in load test if you if you run if you run with 50 users now here you can run with 65 70 users like that that means you are stressing the system okay and what is that you are trying to achieve you are verifying the behavior of the application when more number of users access the application than the load test okay so i can write that point here verifying okay with the behavior or performance of an application okay performance of an application when more number of users okay access the application than the load test you got it verifying the performance of an application when more number of users access the application than the load test so this stress testing uh basically <clears throat> you can uh, you can complete in one hour also okay uh, if client insists you to run for more than one hour you can more run for more than one hour but generally you can complete it in one hour also okay so what do you mean by that you have to test the application with more number of users than the load test so here in the load test if you use 50 users uh, in the in the stress testing you can go with 60 75 like that okay and here also uh you will look for the response times okay the the response time should not exceed 2 seconds so there is a terminology called sla sla means service level agreement okay this is not something related to stress test but overall so sla the service level agreement uh which means that the response time should not exceed 2 seconds so this service level agreement will be between the client and the application team the client will say that okay uh the client the client will say that hey uh the the service level agreement for the response times is 2 seconds that means whatever the whatever the testing we are doing right all the response time should be less than 2 seconds okay so that is a service level agreement okay the client can accept sometimes in some cases if it is greater than 2 seconds also but it depends okay so overall what we are trying to achieve is we are trying to know whether we are trying to know whether the application uh, is able to handle more number of users or not able to withstand you can say with you can use the term withstand also uh, whether the application is able to withstand more number of users than the load test so when you when you run a stress test with more number of users okay and how the application is performing okay so uh, that you have to analyze 
okay that you have to analyze so that is about stress testing so okay so let me check any questions if we have uh no eric it's not like that uh it's like if the load test is successful then only you have to go ahead and uh, run other types of tests basically because uh, load test is the first major test we do and if that itself is failing there is no point in running the remaining tests and it doesn't mean that we have to run all types of tests in all the projects no okay i'll tell you what are the frequently uh, executed tests in all the projects okay and then what are the uh, tests that we execute rarely okay so uh, that's that was my point my point was not like uh, if the if the <clears throat> if the load test is good it doesn't mean that we need not execute other types of tests we have to execute other types of tests but when load test itself is failing we should not uh, we should not run uh, other types of tests because the basic uh, major test itself is failing uh not required uh, it's not like we have to run all the tests shaker but first we have to execute load test after that it's up to you depending on what uh, your your uh, uh, you know project has uh, a project management has uh, as agreed for uh, like let's say what happens is when you are working for some application uh, generally the the application team or the client will tell you uh, what type of tests uh, they require they are expecting us to uh, uh, run okay they will tell us what type of tests they are expecting us to run uh, then uh, based on that uh, we will run accordingly but in some cases what will happen the client doesn't know anything about performance testing the client will simply say that hey i need to do the performance testing for this application so as a performance tester you need to suggest the best type of uh, tests that you can do for the application so what i suggest is every application should first uh, should run should, should run the load test and then you can go for either stress testing okay uh, that means uh, give more load than the load test and then definitely run endurance test do not do not uh, you know forget to run endurance test endurance test is very very important okay because most of the issues we observe uh, in the endurance test okay so it is it is very important so these three things are very important load test stress test endurance test so volume testing uh, scalability is also sometimes important but when you are running a stress test you need not run scalability when you are uh, so, uh, when you are running scalability you need not run stress test Bo, you know any one or any one should be fine then failover testing is absolutely uh, <clears throat> uh, you know uh, done only if the client is asking you to run otherwise not required failover test is something which you have to run only if the client is insisting you to do it otherwise not required okay so what are the important ones load test uh, either stress or scalability and then endurance these three are important and which are frequently run in all the projects not only in your company my company or wherever it is it is common across all the uh, projects across the world okay so that is about stress testing also now let's understand the one more important type of test that is endurance test this endurance test is also called as soak test or also called as a duration test also called as duration test see in some projects they call it as endurance test in some projects they call it as soak test in some projects they call it as endurance duration test okay so <clears throat> what is the purpose of this endurance test it is all about checking the stability of an application so it is all about checking the stability of the application stability of an application so what do you mean by stability how do you test it so basically this test we will run for uh, a minimum of 3 hours or you can run for 5 hours or you can run for 8 hours or you can run for one day you can run for two days you can run for three days you can run for five days also so what is that you are expecting from this what is the outcome you are expecting from this test is the application should be stable throughout the test that means let's say if you are running a test for 5 hours 
so how the application is responding in the first one hour the application should respond in the same way throughout the test so it doesn't mean that in the first one hour if the response times what you are getting is less than two seconds let's say and maybe uh, in the fourth hour or fifth hour of the test the response times what you are getting is seven seconds ten seconds like that not acceptable that means there is some issue there is some issue so what is that there is no stability in there there is no stability at all so when there is stability the response time should be uh, similar throughout the uh, test okay in the long run for example i said right you can run for 3 hours 5 hours 8 hours like that so here i'm telling runs for uh, minimum of minimum of 3 hours and you can run for 5 hours 8 hours one day you know out until 5 days also so basically what i observed in all my uh, work experience i observed that the the endurance test will run uh, for 5 hours or 8 hours minimum 5 hours or 8 hours minimum okay 5 hours or 8 hours minimum in some projects where the environment availability is very less then they will go for 3 hours that means in some projects what will happen there are some frequent deployments and uh, frequent deployments and uh, frequent updates frequent patching frequent uh, batch batches of getting updated and so on if there is some environment uh, dependency something like that you you should run at least minimum of 3 hours at least minimum of 3 hours otherwise you can go ahead and run for 5 hours or 8 hours in some cases where there is a project requirement to run for multiple days you can go ahead and run for one day two days or three days or five days also okay this is about uh, endurance test so what is that we are verifying obviously stability and what what i what i was trying to tell is the application should respond should respond similarly throughout the test okay throughout the test okay so uh, performance uh, should not degrade here so what do you mean by that performance should not degrade so when i say should not degrade that means uh, when you are running for 5 hours in the first one hour as i said you are getting a response time of 2 seconds and in the fourth hour you are getting response times uh, like 8 seconds or 10 seconds not acceptable right it should not get degraded it should be similar throughout the test okay so what is what is that we are going to analyze obviously performance degradation and that is the response times and one more very very important thing that we analyze is uh, is uh, if there is any memory leak issue memory leak issue or uh, are you getting any out of memory exceptions so whenever you are running this particular type of test endurance test there is a high chance that you might get this memory leak issue or or, or you can also say that out of memory exceptions okay uh, so what is this memory leak issue how it happens okay why it happens we will discuss that in our upcoming sessions because that's a totally different uh, uh, the concept which we have to understand first right so along with the response times you you will also analyze uh, and verify for these memory leak issues or out of memory exceptions and so on okay so uh, that that point i i will note note down and we will discuss as a separate concept you know in our upcoming sessions then what is the load that we have to apply here see uh, in the stress testing i told the load should be greater than uh, what we used in the load test but what is the load that i have to apply here of course i am saying we have to run for 5 hours 8 hours but what is the load that i have to apply see the load can be same as what what you used in load test okay in some projects the load can be same as what you used in load test but in some projects in, pro in some projects they consider 75% of the load 75% of the load what they used in load test okay so that means in some projects if you are uh, if you are if you are testing with 50 users uh, load test endurance test will also be 50 users okay 
uh, endurance test will also be 50 users. But in some projects, if you are going for a load test with 50 users, endurance test will be endurance test will be like only with 37 or 38 users. 37 or 38 users. So that means they will only go with 75 percent of the load. 75 percent of the load that should be sufficient. Okay, it depends on the project. Okay, that's the reason I gave you two examples. So you, you should not get uh, confused like why they are using same load as load test, why they are using little bit less the, than the load test and so on. Okay, so this is a very, very important type of test where you see more number of issues also. Okay, and uh, and and every project, every application must uh, undergo this type of test because uh, nowadays uh, the performance is very, very important aspect, right? So they should not, the performance should not degrade even if you are using the application for longer duration. So let's say you are continuously using Facebook for, you know, we don't have any time, let's say, uh, we don't have any work, let's say. For the next two hours, I want to continuously use Facebook. I want to, uh, you know, post comments, uh, go through different uh, uh, pages. I want to comment for different memes or so, whatever it is. So when I'm continuously using Facebook for two hours or three hours, the performance should not degrade. Like in the initially when I launched Facebook, when I click a link, it's opening very quickly. But after after using for one hour, it when I click a link, it's not it, it's responding a little bit slow. So it should not be like that. That's what that's for that reason only we will do endurance test. Okay, for that reason only we'll do endurance test. Now, hope you uh, hope you don't have any questions on this. So very, very important. Uh, why I'm writing all this is I'll, I'll share this notepad file with you guys. Okay. So that, you know, you can just keep it as a reference. In future, if you get confused somewhere, you can just go through this definition and work according. Okay. I can, I'll share the slides also. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to share these slides. I have slides for each and everything. So I'm going to share these slides as well. So any question? Okay. Uh, Eric is asking a question. The SLA is agreed response time for the transaction. The SLA is given by the developer of the app. Yes, first statement is correct. The SLA is the agreed response time for the transaction. Yes, 100%. But the SLA is given by the client, not the developer. The client will say that, hey, uh, the client will say to developer that, hey, when I click this link, the, the next page should load in two seconds. Now the developer should work accordingly and get it done. Okay, so he should take care of that. So who is giving you the uh, SLA requirement? Client will only give you. That means the product owner who is owning the product. So let's say if I'm the owner of the Facebook, I will tell that, hey, whoever the user clicks on comment button or share button, they should the, the post should be shared in less than a second. Okay. So Sainath is asking one more question. In case if the SLA is not provided, then what should we what should we need to consider? See, basically the SLA will be provided. So if the SLA is not provided, so once you have to run the test once, okay? You have to run the test once and give the response times to client. So you should say client, hey, these are the response times what we are getting. So if the client is okay with those response times, uh, he will say continue to uh, execute remaining tests and continue to work accordingly. But if the client says that, no, no, that, that can be too much considering their competitors. So let's say if I own a similar application, something related to something similar like Facebook. No, even I want my application to be as fast as Facebook, right? So even your client might say that if, if, if they don't have any SLA, they will see how their competitors, uh, competitors application is responding. So according to that, they will finalize some metrics for us, okay? So you can you can run uh, yeah you can run a kind of uh, uh, baseline test um, uh, okay what what you get those numbers right you have to share with client and if client is okay with those numbers you can continue with uh, you can continue with the uh, test okay otherwise the client will tell you what exactly he wants okay then this is about endurance test then the fourth type of test is scalability test. Uh, see, scalability test, basically, uh, you can test the application considering future growth. Okay? You can test the application considering future growth. For example, 
today uh, uh, sure santosh i'll tell you in some time so uh, today let's say you are running a load test with uh, let's say 1000 uh, users just giving an example you are running a load test with 1000 uh, users now client will say that hey uh, i am uh, uh, i'm expecting uh, a future growth of 50% in next 6 months i'm expecting a future growth of 50% in next 6 months that means what client is saying that today my my number of users the number of users accessing my application is 1000 however in future maybe in 6 months i am expecting a load i am expecting a load uh, increase of 50% in next 6 months so what you have to do considering the future growth now only you should test with that number now only you should test with that number now what is 50% of 1500 so now itself you have to test with 15 1500 users now itself you have to go for 1500 users okay now itself you have to go over 1500 users now so uh, there might be i'll tell you one uh, uh, one real time example which happened uh, in the recent pandemic times so uh, all we all are aware of the pandemic right it's still there but uh, what happened in the initial uh, days of the pandemic was uh, i was working on one of the bank application and uh, client uh, uh, when this happened we all were working from home right we, you know that so client one day uh, they called us and said uh, that hey uh, due to this pandemic uh, all the uh, you know uh, bank uh, customers uh, they are not directly coming over to the bank and uh, getting their work done rather they are they are most of them are accessing the online application and trying to uh get their job done okay so what happened in that case is the amount of users increased okay uh to some extent the amount of users increased okay because none of them were going to bank directly all of them were accessing the online application so what happens obviously the load will be more so client called us one day and said that considering the current increase in the number of users due to pandemic they are expecting the number of users to increase by 400% in next 2 months okay the number of users they are expecting to in the they are expecting to increase the uh, number of users by 200% in the next 2 months so that means if today the number of users are 1000 1000 in the next 2 months they are expecting 400% increase what is 400% increase that is 4000 users that right so that is, that means in next two months the 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 people accessing the online application will be 4000 users for sure that's what they were expecting so what client told us keeping that in mind please go ahead and test with 400% load and let us know how the application is responding because if those many number of users access the application at the same point of time our bank application should not crash our bank application should not Uh, response slow our bank application should not load forever it should not freeze that's what they they told us so what we did at that point of time is initially quickly we ran a normal 100% load test normal 100% load test that means with normal load that is 1000 users when this is successful you should not directly because client is saying uh, uh, the number of users might increase to 400 to 400% that doesn't mean that you should directly test 400% no that doesn't mean that you have to test it 400 users directly no you should go slowly like you know you should increase slowly so 1000 users you tested right next you should go with double that is 200% load test then you have to test for 2000 users here okay then if this is also successful then go for 300% load test okay then that is 3000 users then if this is also successful then go for 400% load test that is 4000 users 
okay 4000 users now why we have to follow this approach because if you directly test 4000 users and if it fails if it fails if your, if your application crashes can you tell can you tell whether these two these two are okay for you can you tell confidently that these two were okay that can you tell to client that uh, whether the application will handle 2000 or 3000 users now because you tested 4000 users directly and it failed now you cannot guarantee that it will work for 2000 and 3000 that's the reason you have to go one step ahead one step after the other right so now if this is successful you have to go and test 3000 if this is successful you have to go and test 4000 but uh, what uh, if this let's say if this 3000 users is failure that means when you run a test with 3000 users the application did not respond you see so many errors you see the application freezed right and then if that happens there is no point in running 4000 there is no point in running 4000 that means the developer sh should fix this first either either they increase the uh, infrastructure either the infrastructure because that's the only option they have because they don't have time because okay so they should increase the infrastructure for example uh, if the machines of if the servers of machines what they are using if they are having some 16 gb ram they might increase to 32 gb ram they might increase uh, <clears throat> the cpu configuration so depending okay so whatever they do in terms of whatever they can do in terms of infrastructure they will do it on priority because they cannot uh, they cannot uh, you know wait the wait until the users complain about the application not responding right so this is how you should uh, go ahead and test the scalability test considering the future growth considering the future growth sometimes what will happen you know the client will not say uh, the client will not say whether it's a stress test or scalability test or nothing like that but client will say that go ahead and test and let me know where it is breaking go ahead and test the application and tell me where it is breaking okay so in that case what you have to do you have to increase the load gradually like what we have done just now so slowly we have to test 1000 like 1500 2000 like that and tell the client that where exactly it broke okay so you you that that's that's a break even point testing that's a kind of break even point testing you you will tell the client that your application is breaking at that point of time okay your application is breaking at that point of time okay so depends on what the client is telling no the next type of test is uh, okay uh, let me hello hello coach yeah yeah tell me yeah see as you said that uh, application is breaking but uh, uh, what are the parameters you are going to consider here so that we can say that the application is breaking here the application is breaking in sense when you run the load test right you will see some errors so some errors can be something like mostly Why not to bad gateway? That means when the test is running, so you might get these errors like why not to bad gateway error. So when when you get why not to bad gate bad gateway error, uh, which means that the 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 application server has crashed, it is no longer able to uh, accept the request. Okay, so before crashing, probably you might get very high response times first, very high response times like uh, one minute, two minute, three minutes like that, and then it can result in a uh, crash. okay so uh, once you see this 500 bad gateway errors and all you you have the apm you have something called apm tools apm tools something called apm tools uh, the application monitoring tools so where you can go ahead and check like uh, where, like you know what are the application servers that crashed okay or restarted okay and uh, for what are what are the application servers for which the utilization is a uh, 100% or more reach 100% because of which it crashed okay so mm -hmm. those things we will take it into count uh, and uh, we have this one session right uh, a for apm tool uh, app dynamics we have sessions so there i'll clearly explain what to see and uh, you know what is that we need to capture and what happens when the application is crashing what is that you you can see on the you uh, apm screen Uh, app dynamic screen and how can you find out uh, you know that the application is crashing even before it crashes 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So and, and, you will you will get yeah. to see this error for sure. Yeah, Gosik, uh, and maximum uh, questions we are just facing there. Suppose your customer has no idea about that uh, application. What are the different tests you are going to do? In that case, uh, uh, what will be our approach, or how we are going to know about that? What are the tests we are going to perform for that application? How we are going to educate the to the customer in that case? Yeah, so it depends. Uh, it depends on the application, and uh, so as a performance tester, we need to at least run these tests. I told you, right? So if someone is uh, not able to, if the client doesn't have any idea about performance testing, he will ask us to take a call and run the different types of tests. So you should go with load test. Uh, you can go with stress test or scalability test because both in 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 either case, both the way we are increasing the load, and then we have to. Uh, definitely run endurance test okay and then if time permits okay if you if time permits you can go for failover testing also okay so these are more than enough these are more than enough for the any application okay because we are covering all types of tests here so load stress that means greater than load amount greater than the uh, more number of users greater than the load test then we then we are testing the stability Okay, so I'll tell you. See, we we have three parameters like speed, stability, and scalability. So performance testing basically is measured in terms of speed, stability, and scalability. So load test we are measuring. Uh, you know, uh, we are relating the term speed to the load test. Endurance test we are relating the term stability. We have scalability testing. We can relate the term scalability. Okay, so these should be sufficient. These three should be sufficient because end of the day. performance testing is always measured in terms of these three terms only speed stability and scalability but nowadays according to the changing trend we have to do this type of testing also this failover testing okay so very important uh, nowadays nowadays earlier they uh, i mean maybe very rarely but nowadays uh, they are asking us to do this type of test but this is not something which we can do uh, on our own alone we have to work with developer Uh, and then we have to test it it's not like we alone can do it there is some dependency on the you know uh, the developers okay so we uh, so so that that's how we have to okay so you can suggest these three so basically if, if client is saying that uh, they doesn't anything you should say client that basically performance testing is measured in terms of speed stability and scalability and these are the different types of tests you can perform mm -hmm. okay let's take I some other question okay yeah yeah checking uh is smoke uh, and sanity checks i told you yeah smoke i already written here but i didn't explain because i wanted to explain at the end uh okay. so i'll tell you at the end okay this i have already means done. both are same smoke and uh, smoke and sanity checks both are same no no sanity we won't do uh, mostly sanity will be done uh, by the automation testers for functional regression okay so okay. kind of uh, same only but i'll tell you the difference sometimes okay so when i okay. explain smoke and right that should be fine because we do smoke test as a per from performance test from performance team perspective we do smoke test Okay, and the script and shakedown means what? Sorry. Script shakedown. Script shakedown. Shakedown. Shakedown test. Yeah. So no problem. Uh, let me add that also. Okay. Okay. We will we will discuss these two after this failover test. Okay. No, sorry. After this okay. volume test. Yeah. Kosek. Uh, uh, another thing is that in the third one, as you return that endurance testing. Okay. Kosek, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Tell me. I just uh, scrolled it to end. Uh, yeah, yeah. In that case, wha, um, what will be the test approach for the endurance test? Because suppose your load test you have done by using Fibonacci users, okay? Then in that case, what will be our approach to perform the endurance test? See, you can use the same amount of load. Same amount of load. Means yeah, the same, you can use the same uh, amount of. Or you can go with seventy-five percent of the load. So you, oh, I wrote this point. Okay. See, load can be same as what you used in load test. 
but in mm -hmm. some projects they consider 75% of the load uh 75% of the load what they used in load test so if the load test is done with 50 users some projects they take 50 users only for the endurance test some projects if they if they run the load test with 50 users they take only 75% of the load that is 37 or 38 users okay okay so it depends on project also see uh, sometimes what happens is uh, we will join a new team where they already have some approach so we cannot take some decisions there we have to follow the approach what they are already following sometimes we join a team where there is nothing so we have to take our own decisions so then these concepts will definitely help you okay so uh, if if, the, if there is an approach being followed uh, you can follow that however you can provide your inputs but right away don't uh, you know as and when you join don't uh, provide the inputs directly it will go in a negative way just just be there understand what they are following what they are doing what is their approach why they are following that approach okay you might have a different uh, thing in your mind but they they might be following different thing but try to understand why they are doing that why they are not doing what you are thinking so once you get the reason if you feel that reason is correct then you can uh, it's okay if you feel that they are doing something wrong you can provide your inputs to them okay uh, that's how it, but it, again it all depends on project whether it's a new project whether it's an existing project uh, whether you you are joining as a lateral uh, resource into that project you or you are the only one in the project if you are only one in the project you are the only one to take decisions right you are the only one to take decisions and uh, no one can stop you okay because uh, you 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 have a direct interaction with client you have a direct interaction with the development team you can take your own decisions by discussing with them okay so next thing is uh, the volume test the fifth one so volume test basically guys it is uh, similar to a load test only similar to load test except that except that the uh, the back end the data what you have uh, you know for the application will be increased okay intentionally just to test that if the if the data is more in the database how the application is responding how the sql queries are running are there are there any slow running queries okay if you increase the data in the database did it impact will that impact the uh, the query performance will it impact the overall application performance or not to understand that we'll go for a load test uh, sorry we'll go for a volume test it is 99.999 percent similar to load test only thing is the amount of data the amount of data will be uh, populated hugely populated in the database intentionally see i'll tell you one example see currently you have an application okay currently you have an application for that every application will have a database isn't it every application will have a database yes or no yes right so that means the, the database will store the information related to the uh, application for example you take your you take your college website even college application will have the database so what for what purpose to store students information to store teachers information right uh, bank bank application will have database for what to store customers information right to to store their information related to the amount uh, savings account loans whatever it is right uh, even the food delivery apps like they will also have their database to store the customer's information to store their profile information so database is something okay uh, which is used to store the uh, information project related information so every application will have database now let's say for the load test when you run when you run the load test the database uh, okay let's say when you run a load test okay the database contained 1 lakh records 1 lakh records the database contained 1 lakh records now what we are doing to do going to do in the volume test is we are not going to change the configuration of the load test it will run for one hour only we will check for response times only 
we will check for speed only there is nothing change but only change is we will change the number of records we will change the number of records in database okay that means that means we will increase we, we will increase the records in database okay the client will tell how much to increase let's say uh, we increase the number of records from 1 lakh to 3 lakhs now 3 lakhs uh, data okay will be present in database now who will add that remaining 2 lakhs data who will add that 2 lakh remaining data to database the dba we have to inform database administrator dba okay uh, we will have to work we will have to work uh, with dba and developers to get uh, to insert to insert data into database okay so when you have more number of records in the database when you have more number of records in the database how the application is responding okay because when you say about data obviously data will be retrieved by using some sql language right sql means queries so how the queries are running are, uh, is there any impact on the on the query performance is there any impact on the overall application performance right to verify that we will do a volume test that means so what happens generally is i started a new application so i started a college okay i started my own college now the very first year i have 100 students now in my application college application college uh, uh, application website okay i stored information of all the 100 students that's fine after 15 years now the number of students increased from 100 to 15000 that means i have to store the information of 15000 students into my into my application database right and then when i store the 15000 uh, students information still it should uh, the application should respond fast right the performance should not degrade it the performance should not degrade it that means there is no change in the front end and all those things only change is the amount of data that you have in the back end database okay and that and and we are not going to do any changes to the database we do we will not have any access we will have to work with the dba database administrator and developers to insert that amount of data into database and this test is not done for every project this test will be done only if there is some requirement from the client or the developers otherwise we will not run this test at all otherwise we are not going to run this test at all so developers or the client will tell us if we have to run this so we have to do a simple thing no need to change anything keep the load test as it is just ask them just ask they just ask them to insert some additional data okay uh, according to the requirement and then go ahead and run the load test and then share the results that's it so this is about the volume test okay so uh, i hope you understood volume test it's very clear there is no change it's all about it's all similar to the load test only only thing is back end data will be huge that's it now we have completed these five types of testing load stress endurance scalability volume this failover testing we will have to discuss in the next session because we have some dependency in understanding some terms like app server web server and so on okay so first we will learn the terms application server what is a server what is a protocol okay um, what is the server architecture and then we will discuss about this failover testing and how we have to test it we have to work with development teams we cannot do it on our own okay because we have to bring down some of the servers and we have to bring uh, bring it up as and when required like that so that is one thing then coming to the smoke test see basically smoke test uh, we will run when we will run a smoke test means see you developed all these scripts okay scripts in sense yesterday uh, like yesterday we have discussed right so in vuegen we developed all the scripts for these workflows so we will we will get these workflows right so one one such workflow is transfer money so for all these workflows we will record or generate or create script in vuegen so when you have your scripts ready when you have this target volumes given to you okay so what you will do is 
before running before actually running the load test before actually running the load test we will run a smoke test for 5 to 10 minutes or 15 minutes max maybe run for 10 to 15 minutes with how many number of users just to two or three users don't run for 50 users or 100 users or 1000 users like that not required just run for two or three users run for 10 to 15 minutes why because we just want to see before running the actual load test with some huge numbers we want to run the smoke test to ensure that the scripts are working fine in the controller as well with some limited number of users okay we are making sure that the scripts are absolutely working fine for that purpose we will run a smoke test okay simply you develop scripts and you directly initiate a load test and if you see some issues in the scripting during the load test that is not the right right approach right that is not the right approach so you have to make sure that all your scripts scripts are working fine even after uploading to controller okay and running it running a smoke test from there smoke test will ensure that whatever the whatever the scripts or workflows you have those are working fine okay before you actually run the load test if the smoke test itself is failing if the smoke test itself is failing it can fail for two reasons one is the application issue the application itself has some issue second thing is your script issue if the smoke test fails because of script issue you have to fix it immediately okay if the smoke test fails for application application related issue then you cannot run the load test also then you cannot run the load test also you should send out an email to the application team that means that to the developers that hey we run we just ran a smoke test and observed that the application is failing at this point at this particular place please look into it if the if the smoke test is failing because of your script issue you need to log into that view gen and open the script what which is failing you have to fix that where it is failing okay make some changes according to according to uh, the reason for what it is failing that is about smoke test what is the shakedown test okay what is this shakedown test so <clears throat> so when uh, so oh, let's say smoke test is successful okay let's say smoke test is successful what is that you have to run load test okay let's say you initiated a load test now when you initiated a load test let, obviously load test will be run for with uh, more number of users let's say 50 or 100 or 500 like that right when you run a load test with such big number of users more amount more number of users there is a chance that it can there's a chance that it can uh, have some issues related to test data related to test data related to some minor scripting issues which we didn't expect which we, which were not found in the smoke test okay or due to some environment availability due to some environment non availability or environment issues we had some issues during our load test the load test had some issues okay these sort of issues okay then then because of these the load test was not successful then you can actually count it as a shakedown test the shakedown test will ensure that the shakedown test will ensure that your test is your test doesn't have any major issues even if you're running major or minor issues even if you're running with more number of users like uh, it, the issues can be related to test data the minor uh, exceptions from your scripting side environment issues and all those things right so directly we don't call it as a shakedown test we don't run as a shakedown test as such in most of the projects we will run the load test directly but if something happens there we will tell client that we are considering that as a shakedown test because that's the first test what we are running because we are running it for the first time we are running it for the first time okay so that is called as a shakedown test we we don't directly tell client that hey today we are running shakedown test generally that doesn't happen we will tell client that we are running a load test if that is failing due to a, because of any of these small things okay and you tell client that we are counting we are considering this as a shakedown test because of some environment issues or some test data issues or so on and and because it's a first test itself because that's also a first test okay it's up to you so, see some projects have very strict timelines they don't have time at all 
So there you cannot run a separate uh, shakedown test, separate load test, separate like that. You don't have time. You need to complete everything in three, four days like that. Then in that case, uh, you have to directly go for load test and you know uh, take it from there accordingly. In some projects, you have good amount of time. There you can do your own things like smoke test, shakedown test, load test, whatever you want, you can run. It all depends on the project to project. Waterfall model projects, you will have a little bit more time. Uh, agile projects, you might have a little bit less time. Okay? Any questions? We, we didn't discuss only failover testing. We will discuss tomorrow. Uh, smoke smoke uh, means testing. like... Uh... Can See, smoke one more time? Means, See, smoke test means yesterday uh, we developed this script, not this script. Uh, one second. Yesterday we, we developed uh, some script, right? Uh, some demo script we recorded. Right. So this is the script we recorded yesterday, isn't it? So this script, I, it's ready. So if I run this, it's working fine. So if I run this, yesterday I showed you how to run, right? So if I run this from here, from this fusion, it's working fine. See, it's passing. Okay, let's say it's passing. Now, but the actual load test you will not run from here. The actual load test you will run from controller or performance center components, right? So this script, what you developed here, you should upload it there into the controller or performance center. Now, yes. how it is working there, how it is working there to check, we will run a smoke test. Okay, whether, whether the script is working fine from controller, uh, without any is uh, scripting issues, uh, tool related issues, application issues, okay, whether it is working fine or not, we will run a smoke test with two to three users for five to 10 minutes max. That should be sufficient. Okay, yeah, so okay. I told you yeah. that in yesterday's architecture, we have the uh, we have the component where, where we will uh, create scenarios and trigger the execution. So there we will run the smoke test there. Uh, question or uh, here? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, question, AJ said that you are just recording that particular script and just help me or give me some idea whenever you are going to reply that particular script, how it uh, reply through its browser or how that HTTP protocol is working on that. Okay. So we have a solution. Uh, uh, in, in the upcoming sessions, right? So. We I general, we haven't started the practicals yet, actually. Okay. So when we work on the tool, yesterday, why did we record is uh, according to the agenda. So we had some plan for the yesterday's demo. So for that reason, we recorded this small script and we executed it just to show how the uh, report is coming, like how these response times are coming up here. Okay. And all those things. But for your question, yeah. uh, uh, we have, a, we have uh, separate sessions coming up. Right. Uh, when we discuss about practicals, how the request is going, what is the HTTP request, uh, what is HTTP head, uh, you know, header, what is the difference between header and a body, what is request header, what is request body, what is response header, what is response body, uh, you know, how uh, how the uh, server get, sends the response back, okay, what is throughput. So all these concepts we are going to cover in our upcoming session. Yeah. Only only thing is that whenever I'm just deploying the widget running through uh, reply through browser. Sorry, uh, yeah, uh, can you ask the question again? Yeah, yeah. When you are just going to reply that script, is it running through browser or how it is? That is small uh, input I need from you. Uh, it depends again. Uh, it depends again. It depends on the protocol. So it depends on the protocol. For example, no, if you for are using HTTP. A... For HTTP, yes. No, it uh, uh, HTTP uh, kind of a kind of, okay, kind of, not exactly, but a kind of. So I have to explain you the diagram. That's the reason. So there is a diagram which is which is uh, depicting like how the request goes, and uh, there are two, two two to three cases there. So I have to draw, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know. I explain the diagram to you. So that is covered in the maybe Thursday or Friday, probably. That's the reason. So it will take some time to explain that. Okay. So we will cover that. Don't worry. Uh, we just started, right? This is, this is the very day one. So I just don't want to confuse others also uh, with the more uh, terms and terminologies included here. Yeah. 
uh, this is santosh so, uh, smoke testing means like uh, running with a small amount time uh, small amount of time with a minimal number of users so that is smoke test right running with less less amount of users like 2 to 3 users okay and okay. just to check whether your scripts are working fine in controller or performance center uh, and uh, duration you, what we need to keep duration you can run for 10 15 time. minutes max okay okay yeah you can run for 10 15 minutes or you can run for uh, like 5 uh, to 10 iterations or if 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 you don't want to mention any time you can run uh, for 5 to 10 iterations for example the same steps will run for 10 times continuously like that that so you we need to set in controller yeah, you set it in controller yes, yes. okay okay uh and uh, actually i uh, in my project i need this web service protocol also so how can i get that one yeah for web service uh, we uh, we have three to four uh, hours of recorded session uh, okay. you can go you know uh, that those recorded sessions will be given to you uh, those are recorded by kumar sir itself directly uh, it contains mm. like soap and rest soap and rest both so you can just go through that it's a simple thing and in fact uh, it is easy than uh, ui so web service is uh, mm. uh, 10 times easier than ui scripting so you can we, okay. you can just go through those sessions and if you have any questions you can reach out to me okay uh, and the, those recorded sessions will be provided along with this or there is any separate payment for that no no uh, along with this only okay along with this only so if it is very urgent like for example you have the you have to do it in next 10 days or 15 days very urgent uh, let me know i will ask them to uh, share those videos right away otherwise generally what they do is they will share uh, at the end of the course uh, like all the documentation and all so whatever the doc pending documentation and recorded sessions and all those things uh, sample resumes okay. and all those they will Actually, share it is a uh, very urgent so uh, because no yesterday problem. a client uh, given the postman collection and asked me to uh, record the script but there, there are scripts but uh, they are all of a uh, soap request but uh, with this uh, uh, postman collection i need to write the web custom request and uh, do that one so i was in some tense <laughs> uh, <clears throat> no problem you can you can you can use uh, those recorded sessions so i will uh, mm. once you register right uh, mm. i will inform i will inform uh, the team to share those sessions with you right away okay okay i will do it today okay okay sure thank you or oh, any other questions so in the next yeah, session we are, yeah tell me Shik, uh, actually a small doubt. See, as as a you know uh, testing company, we are running this uh, firm, and after you know finalizing the like total period of time of the training, are we providing with any certs? Uh, no, but uh, certificate in sense, uh, you will be you will be getting the certificate from Isha Training Solutions, the course completion certificate. Okay, no, because you know there are places where we we are upgrading or we are adding in our portfolio, so those certificates are mandatory in few few of our companies. Uh, yes, so yes. That so that is the reason you, you I'm just asking the, you. Yeah, yeah, you will get the certificate from Isha Trading Solutions, uh, the course completion certificate. Oh, that's great. Thank you. So, any other questions uh, from from the tool perspective? Because some of you might have joined today only, right? So you might have some questions related to course content or uh, some duration or whatever it is. Uh, you can ask those questions. In the next session, we are going to discuss about what is a server, what is a protocol, uh, how it works, like uh, how the request uh, goes, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, from source to destination, right? So someone was asking the question, right? Arun, I guess. I don't know his name. Arun only, I guess. So in the next session only, we will take that uh, thing. I will, I will explain that. Uh, what is a protocol? What is a server architecture? What is this failover testing? Uh, all those things. Uh, recorded sessions will be shared daily, Ramkoti.
uh, documentation, whatever the documentation we have, we will share. Uh, at the end of the course, you will also get this interview question and, uh, question and answer document. So basically, when before attending interview, you can just go through this document, uh, which will definitely help you in uh, clearing the interview for sure. Okay, so um, we, I'm still adding some of the questions, some of the real time question. Okay, so uh, you will definitely get it soon. Any other questions? Yeah, sorry. quick question. Last one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I run. <clears throat> what if uh, during your load test, you get some of the requests is bad gateway 502, 502? Will that consider as a fail? But some requests you get as 200 pass. Will that consider as a fail or pass? Uh, see, uh, there are two things actually. So whenever you, whenever this request goes to server, right? So that means this re, this request whatever we uh, whatever it generated, basically this request will go to server, and in response you get and in response you get some content, and along with that you will also get the response code. Okay. So obviously uh, when you get some response code, based on the response code, uh, you will decide whether it's a pass or fail by default. By default, even even this fusion tool will decide. Uh, based on the response code only by default. So if it, if the response code is 200, then it is success. If apart from the 200, uh, if you're getting any other any other uh, error code or any other thing, it depends. We have to analyze why we are getting. Okay. So here, if you see, I have just mentioned some of the error codes. Where you see 400 bad requests, 404 page not found, 401 unauthorized error, 500 internal server error. 502 bad gateway, 504 gateway timeout error, 503 service unavailable error. So you have some other requests like 300, three, uh, some re some response code related to 300 family. So those are uh, related to redirections. Those are not errors, but redirections. Uh, so something like that. So if it is 200, if it is 200, it is a success response. If it is, uh, apart from 200, if you are getting any of these, you know, those are failures. You have you have few more, but I've just mentioned few because in interview they will they will quickly ask, can you tell me any four to five uh, error response codes what you observed frequently in your recent projects? So then we should not get confused. You should you should tell them quickly. The best way to do is the best way to remember is uh, the 400 family and the 500 family. 400 is 400, 404, 401, 403, 500 is 500, 502, 503, 504 like that. Okay, easy to remember. Okay, again, someone asked the same question related to browser. Okay, so, uh, yeah, one second. Someone Kaushik. asked a question related to browser separately again. So, let me tell you one thing uh, the same question what Arun was also asking. So, uh, in the runtime settings, if you see, I'll tell you whether it is launching through browser or not. One small uh, uh, confirmation for that. Uh, because one other guy also asked the same question. So in this runtime settings, if you see browser emulation, so during replaying of the script, it is it is saying which browser to select. So that will tell you what what is the answer, right? So during replaying of the script, it is asking which browser to uh, choose, uh, you know, which user agent to uh, choose, which browser it should emulate and run. So Internet Explorer, Edge, Chrome, Firefox, and uh, other browsers. Okay, so as of now, I can tell this much only because due to time constraints, it's already 9.25. So in our upcoming sessions, uh, we will discuss more about it. Okay, so I hope both of you got the answer by now. Yeah, uh, tell me, go ahead. Uh, so 400 errors are something we made mistake in our script, right? Like we, we which has our control. Uh, yes, so 400 bad requests, uh, if you get it right, so there might be uh, in not only 400, in sometimes 401, 403 also is because of uh, our uh, because of our scripting issues only probably. Uh, so you need to find out like why we are getting 400, and you need to fix it from our end. So how to fix it? How to analyze where it's going wrong? Uh, we have to discuss again in a separate session.
So generally, I'll tell you, uh, let me uh, show you where exactly we will see that. So here it is. So here you will see. So basically what happens is uh, this is the request request what we are sending. This is the response what we are getting. So here, if you see HTTP 200, that means we got success response. So if you would have got some other response code like 400 or something like that, uh, then you will get that error code here. And we have to find out like why we are getting 400, why we are getting 500, why we are getting 403, 401 and so on. So 400, 400, 401, 403, we can check from our end. Is it because of our script issue uh, that we are getting 400, 401, 403? Uh, something like that we have to check from our end. Okay, any other questions? Uh, Ramkoti, uh, please ping in the group. Uh, and uh, even I will inform uh, the admin team. I will give your name to the admin team. They will reach out to you immediately, okay? Okay, so hopefully I answered all the questions. Uh, uh okay so please if you have any further questions right please do ping in the group i will make a note of it and i'll call you immediately one one on one and i'll explain you that uh, particular concept okay so uh, the course uh, timing will be same uh, daily uh, from monday to friday okay and uh, the course content we have already discussed yesterday if you have any questions related to course content, please ping me in the group. I will call you again and I'll, and I'll explain you the course content. If you are looking for some specific topic or something like that, please ping. Uh, I'm happy to uh, add it, okay, uh, in the course content, okay? But I'm sure for whatever the performance tester requires uh, to crack the interview and to even work in the real time project, we have already added all those things. If something you feel that it uh, you know it is it should be there or it is required or uh, for your project or something ping me uh, if i'm unable to add it I, I can at least explain the topic to you directly okay so thank you once again everyone for joining today's session uh, hope to see all of you in the upcoming sessions as well uh, have a great rest of the day